Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I am the Common Sense Guy or some people know me better as Jason. How are you all doing today and let's get into this shit show of what's going on at this moment in time. And it's from Sky News, which I'm quite shocked about actually to be fair. For people that are outside of the UK, we have a TV show called Countdown. And on that show we have a technically a Russian Jewish girl called Rachel Riley. And She's very, very pretty. She's very well educated. She's a physicist. She's a proper mathematician. She is uh, what you'd call a, an intelligent girl. She, she knows her shit. Unfortunately, because she's being outspoken about how... Let, let's be politically correct for a second. I don't want to get any strikes or anything on my channel. But the perception of anti-semitism that is coming from the labor camp in general maybe not necessarily from politicians but in general the anti-semitism that seems to be coming out from the left camp and rachel riley and a couple of others have been pointing this out and due to the fact that rachel riley has been pointing this out she has now had smear campaigns against her to the point of where people are now not saying that she is really jewish to the point where people were saying that because she's going against the left, she's a Tory. Now, you don't have to be a Tory to be against anti-Semitism. But that was the point of intersectionality. Though then again, I could be wrong on that one. I normally am when it comes to that. But let's get actually... Let's actually... Let's actually get into this story, shall we? Where we can actually find out the ins and the outs. Yeah, Rachel Riley. So as you can see here, the main title of this from Sky News is Countdown Star Rachel Riley to get extra security over anti-Semitism abuse, and I'll add to it, from the left. Mainly from the left, believe it or not. The game shows a math expert who is Jewish says the online trolling has got worse and now includes physical threats to her safety. And I added the last two words there. This is from the kinder, gentler side of politics. The left that is supposed to be caring, respectful, understanding, ready for discourse. But if you have an opposing view, then eh, we're going to call you as much names as we possibly can to try and get you to change your mind forcefully rather than arguing point by point. But let's have a go. I mean, as you can see, this is uh, Rachel Riley. Very pretty indeed. Very pretty, very intelligent. But that's not what we're here for for today. So, security is to be tightened before the countdown star, Rachel Riley, after she was subjected to online abuse and threats for challenging anti-Semitism. Now, be honest with yourselves on that one. Did you ever think that somebody would be ridiculed? Did you ever think that somebody would have physical threats thrown against them? A tirade, a tsunami of reports, a tsunami of incidents of people going after you because you're going after people that you perceive to be anti-Semitic. And the tribalism that is involved in that, to not realise that you're going against your own principles from the left, to stop people that are oppressed from oppressing. But yet, the lefty in itself, am I right? The game shows that a resident mathematician said she had been targeted by Labour supporters on Twitter for her criticism of the party and leader Jeremy Corden amid the ongoing controversy embroiling the left, as in Labour being really anti-Semitic. But again, that's all to do with if you believe in the reports. So Riley, who is Jewish, has already spoken about being trolled online, but said the problem had become worse and now included physical threats. In other words, the more outspoken that she got about her abuse of people actually abusing her because of her Jewish heritage, and most importantly, her pointing out that other people are actually being anti-Semitic, she's now getting physical abuse threats 
thrown at her, as well as just a tirade of abuse from coming from other people. Now, for me, it's a case of, yeah, if you put your opinion out there, people are going to give you your opinion back. But when you're actually getting physical threats, and when it's from the gentler side of politics, and from Jeremy Corbyn's left, for the many and not the few, or in some people's case, for the many, not the Jew, depending on who you speak to, of course, it seems that it's coming from that aspect of, I'm better than you, and it keeps keeps on coming from that aspect of the left going, well, we're going to refute your points because we emotionally think that you're wrong. Rather than actually going through it point by point and seeing that certain groups or certain people in groups possibly are anti-Semitic. And because you are so tribal that you do not want to examine your groups yourselves or your entirety yourselves, you just want to defend it without batting an eyelid and then go against your core principles of one, going against a woman, going against a minority, as in a Jewish person, and yet you're happy to do this when these people are against your political points of view. How can you actually understand your hypocrisy if you can't even understand your own doctrine? She told the Times, the more I speak, the more abuse I get. In other words, the more you speak, the more people are trying to shut you up. Great use of having discourse here and political discussion. Jeremy Corbyn's leadership is going amazingly. And the more abuse I get, the more I speak. It's got to a point where I can't look at my Twitter feed anymore. It's just a constant stream of abuse from people that are trying to defend people that are anti-Semitic. Or if they're not defending the people themselves, just attacking Rachel Riley on her views of being oppressed. Now imagine, imagine a world, no sorry, we're not going to do John Lennon today, but imagine that if Rachel Riley was black and how this would look for the left in general and for the right and how the right would, uh, how the left would look at it if it was the right doing this to a person of colour. But because it's Rachel Riley and because she's white, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, does it? Because she's against my politics, so she's now out of the group. She added, we are getting more security for Countdown. Riley, who has appeared on the Channel 4 daytime program since 2009, said she believes she is a target for speaking up against anti-Semitism and that she does not take it lightly. In other words, fearing that the threats that are coming in are threats that can and may be will be acted upon. That's a worrying thought for somebody who's only giving their opinion of being oppressed. It's almost like an oppressor is stopping her from speaking. I cannot make it any clearer than that left. I cannot. She said, with the hashtag, get the Tories out, or the red rose or hashtag GC4PM, as in Jeremy Corbyn for Prime Minister, they say to me, you're only calling out the left. Well, I've been attacked by people on the left, and the best way to not have me talk about anti-Semitism on the left is not to be anti-Semitic. I think that's too much logic for them, Rachel. I really think that that's too much logic for them. The logical consistency of sticking by an argument is too much for them. You're pointing out that their messiahs, their religious doctrines, their religious leaders are in the wrong in some aspect of their political diversity. Amazing that, isn't it? How politics is now turning into forms of religion and tribalism is now dictating what identity politics is now turning into. It's not like anybody ever called that, ever. Riley has also rejected accusations by supporters of Mr Corbyn that she is a Tory, previously stating that she has no political allegiance. Which is fine. Nobody needs to be politically aligned to talk out about anti-Semitism that is in a particular group. Now, surely if you are for the equality of all and you are for the oppression to stop or a form's oppression to stop, then surely you would listen to how you are operating your own selves so you, the left, the caring people, can be the beacon of light 
to show us what way we're supposed to be. But yet, you can't even do that when somebody calls out and says that there are people in your groups that are being anti-Semitic. But, you know, I don't really know anything. I don't really know. So, however, she told the newspaper that she would not now vote for Labour as she believes the party is actively encouraging the abuse of people who are standing up to this. In other words, people that are coming out against Labour and the people and politicians that are speaking in this rhetoric to go against people that are pointing out aspects of anti-Semitism in their own groups are now trying to actually encourage that by not saying anything or not trying to stop them from doing this. I, I really don't understand how people that are on the left, and I mean this in general, and I don't mean everybody that's on the left, but people on the left are not inclined to call out their own to show people that they are the morally superior people. Because when the left in general will argue predominantly from a moralistic point of view, surely the holier than thou must be the reasons and the people that we follow by example. This does not seem to be by example. So Mr Corbyn has strongly denied allegations of anti-Semitism during the continuing row that has engulfed his party. Yes, indeed. So the, the main point in this story is for me that you have the left in itself, and I have reliterated the points quite a many times, unfortunately, but it's something that I really want to drum into people. If you are going to be the moralistic superior in arguments to people that are using facts and things like that, and you are saying that, well, moralistically we should do this rather than pragmatically do that, then maybe it's a case that you should be the ones that are leading the people, especially when it comes to the point of the actual leaders of said groups. Surely it should be the case that you should be the ones that are teaching us how to be morally better and how to be morally accepting of people that are being oppressed. But yet in stories like this that point out the, the left eating left, if you will, for obstesia sakes, is it not the aspect of if people are pointing out mistakes that you have made or mistakes certain groups or people in groups have made, isn't it a case of you should listen and understand where the oppressed, by your definitions, are actually coming from? Or are you just going to ignore the oppressed, as in your definitions, are actually being just to prove a political point that you don't want to actually go against people to prove the story accurate? Because that's where it seems to be at this moment in time. This story is of anti-Semitism all the way from the top, Jeremy Corbyn all the way down to the bottom, seems to be going on for a very, very long time. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's not a targeted campaign by the media in itself, but also as well, if you are actually advocating and going against people, actively going against oppression and people that are being oppressed, as in the Jewish people in this instance, by anti-Semitism, are you not being complicit? Are you not actually being part of the problem? by not listening to the oppressed in your doctrine and your ideas? Are you not the ones that are instigating and allowing this? Surely you on the left, surely you in Labour, should be the ones that are pointing out that equality is for all. Not for people that have the same political views as me, not for the same people that have the same skin colour as me, but not for the people that have the same religion or non-religion as me, but for equality for all. Except it's not. As soon as it comes to the point of people that have a different political ideology to you or even pointing out flaws in your own ideology or people that are in your ideology, you don't want to listen. You don't want to hear that criticism. You don't want to realise that your ideas are not the sole idea in the world. You don't want to see that there are human fallibilities that are in your doctrine and ideas. You don't want to see it. And it takes a woman being oppressed to come out into a story to be able to point all of this out. It's amazing to me that we have to be in that sort of section of society, especially for people on the left that live and breathe intersectionality, but won't apply it 
when people have different opposing views to them, whether it be politically, religiously, or in general. But with that being said, guys, I'd just like to point out, see you later.